Government debt in Canada increased to $685.45 billion in 2019 from $671.25 billion in 2018. Government debt in Canada averaged $315.18 billion from 1962 until 2019, reaching an all-time high of $685.45 billion in 2019 and a record low of $14.83 billion in 1962. Source. Department of Finance Canada. Canada recorded a government debt equivalent to 89.70% of the country's gross domestic product in 2018. Government debt to GDP in Canada averaged 78.23% from 1980 until 2018, reaching an all-time high of 100.20% in 1996 and a record low of 44.90% in 1980. Source. Department of Finance Canada. Canadian government debt, also called Canada's public debt, is the liabilities of the government sector. For 2019, the fiscal year ending 31 March 2020, total financial liabilities or gross debt was $2,434 billion, $64,087 per capita, for the consolidated Canadian general government, federal, provincial, territorial, and local governments combined. This corresponds to 105.3% as a ratio of GDP, GDP was $2,311 billion. Of the gross debt, $1,145 billion or 47% was federal, central government liabilities, 49.6% as a ratio to GDP. Provincial government liabilities comprise most of the remaining liabilities. Statistics Canada says debt is expected to rise significantly in 2020 due to massive new borrowing to cover expected historic deficits from measures implemented in response to the pandemic. As of the third quarter of 2020, the ratio of gross debt to GDP for the federal government reached 59.5% while the ratio for the federal plus other levels of government had climbed to 131.1%. Canadians are swimming in debt in Canada. The debt-to-income ratio is one of the highest in history and compares terribly well with the United States just prior to the global financial crisis in 2008. Debt is putting the Canadian economy at risk of a banking crisis, according to the Bank of International Settlements. This should be a wake-up call for regulators. Canadians' debt-to-income ratio rose to almost 178%. That means Canadians owe nearly $1.78 for every dollar of disposable income. Canadians owe $1.78 in credit market debt in the second quarter, which includes consumer credit, mortgages, and non-mortgage loans, for every dollar of household disposable income. Total credit market debt amounted to $2.25 trillion in the second quarter, including nearly $1.47 trillion in mortgage debt and $782.9 billion in consumer credit and non-mortgage loans. The Bank of Canada has repeatedly pointed to household debt as a critical area of concern for the Canadian economy. Canada was losing the equivalent of 187,000 jobs last month. Financial stress is now at a tipping point. The middle class is always getting squeezed by the federal government. Fewer tax credits here, more carbon taxes, and HST there. It all compounds over time. The only middle class families that aren't losing are those that work for the public sector where salary and benefits creep never ends. Union extorted salary increases, jobs for life, gold-plated benefits, and defined benefits pensions. It never ends. There are a number of reasons why Canadians have so much personal debt. Canada has housing prices that have gotten out of hand relative to wages and the availability of land, more than $600,000 on average and a million or more where a third of the population lives. That means that Canadians take out large mortgages Canadians sometimes feel rich and go shopping even if they have next to nothing in the bank, because their houses are supposedly worth so much a high total tax load, more than 33% of GDP. For example, a single earner making $60,000 a year is left with $37,000 or so to spend on essentials and a few extras after adding up the taxes and payroll deductions. In case you were wondering, those taxes and payroll deductions include federal income tax, provincial income tax, property tax, gas tax, carbon tax, excise taxes, harmonized sales tax of 13% or more in all provinces except Alberta on most purchases, Canada pension plan contribution, employment insurance premiums, healthcare premiums, and so on. 
Wanting things before we can afford them many citizens buy things on their credit cards and end up paying 20 to 28 percent or even more on financing those purchases not enough good jobs in Canada since there aren't enough high-end, value-added businesses. Canada is quite reliant on primary industries, e.g., oil and gas, forestry, agriculture, and mining, for a developed country. As well as on the service sector imagine how much easier it would be to balance the household budget if Canadian houses cost what they do in the US or in the United Kingdom and if household taxes were somewhere between where they are now and where they were in the 1960s. Households, on average, would have at least an extra $20,000 or so per year, even without any raises. Things would be even better if Canada's private sector could fire on all cylinders, once we get past COVID. For that to happen, however, the government would have to prioritize economic growth, and let the private sector work its magic. Unfortunately that might be difficult for a government that views business and those earning decent incomes as golden geese to pluck, and redistribution as their raison d'etre, main goal. This was The Survival Economist. Please like. Share. Subscribe. And please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels, I do upload videos there too. You'll find the links in the description box. You will also find a PayPal link if you want to make a donation. Thank you wholeheartedly to all those of you who have already donated. Stay safe and healthy friends.